Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs, uh, where we talk about all things performance related. And I'm happy to have one of my colleagues with me again here today, Todd Muirhead, uh, who has uh, worked for years within the performance world. I'm sure you've come across this stuff on the internet here already. But uh, Todd, for those who don't know you, give yourself a quick introduction. Yeah, my name is Todd Muirhead. I've been in VMware performance engineering for a while, like Mark said. I mostly focus on uh, database performance, SQL Server and Oracle most often. So it's, it's a, I think it's a really fun job. I get to uh, run big, big databases against big systems and and uh, try to try to get the best performance possible. Well, and, and a special note that he didn't bring up to himself, but he's one of the co-creators of DVD Store, which is again one of those uh, typical benchmarks we use out there. Uh, certainly, we use it every day here. But uh, I think one of the neat things, Todd, you've got to do over the last little while here is. As we see, you know, AMD come back to the market, we see generations of their technology coming out. You've been running database tests on them for a long time. And I, I hear now you have a bit of a, a path for us to show what scalabilities look like. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting set of numbers. Um, so every, every, every time uh, AMD comes out with a new processor, we get uh, prototype systems in-house to test out uh, functionality number one and also Number two, right behind that is the performance. And so I do a, I do a, a kind of a standard test uh, with SQL Server to, uh, to, to test out the performance of these, these new systems and, and validate that, yes, it kind of fits in with what we would expect to see with a new generation of server processors. So we're going to step through that today for four different uh, AMD generations. Um, and just to quickly kind of level set, the, the, the test is running on uh, SQL Server 2019 on Windows Server 2019 using uh, like my, my benchmark, the, the, the DVD store uh, 3.5. So it's the exact same uh, set of VMs. I typically keep one VM around. And then when it comes to time to do a test, I clone it out for the number of VMs that I need to, to do the test. And these are scale up tests. So we start with one VM and then double it to two and four, et cetera, until we reach the maximum number of VMs that are supported uh, when we, where we have one vCPU to one physical core on the host. So when we get to the top uh, number, we've we've maxed out the, the server in terms of uh, assigning all the cores for uh, vCPUs. Make sense? That sounds awesome. I think, you know, as we look at the continuing core depth, this will be very interesting to see. So uh, let's go for it. Thanks, Todd. All right, let me switch over to some slides real quick. Okie dokie. So we're going to start off with uh, the AMD Epic Milan. This is... Uh, from the Epic 7003 series using Zen 3 cores. So this is from a few years ago. Um, each one of these processors has 64 cores per socket. And so what I'm showing here is we had, we had good scaling up to 128 uh, total vCPUs or eight, eight, uh, eight 16 vCPU VMs. So we start off with the, the single VM and then we have two VMs, four VMs and eight VMs. And you can see that our total uh, Throughput, which in the DVD store case is represented as orders per minute, the number of you know orders that they were able to process of these theoretical customers, um, scales up uh, really nicely. So this is our baseline. So when we got the next generation in, the uh, the that was uh, was the Milan X. So this is the same uh, Zen three core, but it used the uh, the 3D vCache technology, where they're able to stack additional uh, cache onto the processor and they uh, dramatically increase the size of the L3 cache. So with this increase in cache, even though we have the same number of cores, um, we were able to get much better database performance. So you can see that um, even at the, you know, from the starting of, from a single VM all the way up through eight VMs, we see these nice performance gains with the additional uh, cache that was available with Milan X. I think that's pretty cool to see that Again, same processor core, but the value of the cache improving things. And I love to see that scalability. Uh, you know, so that certainly says we can, you know, use the whole host. Those that's a very powerful platform uh, with that many cores in it. Yeah, I guess a quick note. So the, with the uh, with the additional size cache, won't uh, impact all applications like it is this SQL Server application. So some applications would, could benefit even more. Some could benefit less. It's definitely uh, your mileage will vary kind of thing. But for this test, right, it, it is, did show a nice advantage. So then we get to the next generation, which is Genoa. This is, uh, we're now in the, the uh, Zen 4 cores, and we 
you know, Zen 4 type cores. And we also have more cores. So instead of 64 cores per socket, we have 96 cores per socket with this generation. And you see uh, a very nice increase because um, each of these cores are the next generation. So they're more powerful. Uh, we also have more of them. So not only are we seeing an increase with the same number of vCPUs, but we're also able to run additional VMs. We get four more VMs on the same, same size host. So we get a total of 100, 192 vCPUs or, or 12, uh, 12 VMs. So you really begin to see the number of cores come to bear in a big way, and you get this big performance boost um, out on the bar to the far right. I think, again, it speaks volumes to core density. And I think, you know, I, I think we're all excited to see the next set of slide or next slide here with Bergamo. Yes. So this is the this is this this is the really cool set. Um, so with Bergamo, which is the most recent um, addition, this is uh, also in the Epic nine thousand four series, but it's not the Zen four. It's the Zen four C core. And what these are, these are very very dense cores. They're able to get one hundred and twenty eight cores per socket, but the individual cores themselves aren't quite as powerful as the regular Zen four core. So. What you see is we're still able to get, uh, we're able to get four more VMs, you know, 16 total um, on the two socket hosts. We get slightly more performance than we were able to get with the 12 uh, Genoa VMs. But in all the, in the previous data points, you see that the Genoa uh, based uh, VMs were able to outperform the same number of VMs that were Bergamo based. So, this is a, I think this is really cool data. It illustrates that depending on um, kind of what your goals are and how your applications work, it, it might make sense to you go with the more powerful uh, cores in Genoa or go with the more numerous cores of Bergamo. So we've got a couple of options here. Um, they both work out to great uh, performance at the high end. We're getting tons of throughput um, through this box. Um, but there are some differences that, that show up with the different core types, the Zen 4C versus the uh, Zen 4. Well, that that's really interesting to see because again, as we've always said, you know, when you're picking your hardware, it's important to kind of consider that because uh, there are a number of, you know, processor SKUs and these kind of data points show what they're better for or what you might use them for. Are we looking for density? Or are we looking for single entity performance? And uh, so I think this is a, just an awesome data set to demonstrate uh, what's capable there. Yeah, I agree, Mark. It's been a really cool set of uh, test results, and um, I was excited to get to share them today. Awesome. Well, thank you, Todd, as always, for sharing your insight and knowledge and performance data with us. And uh, we look forward, folks, to having you join us again uh, next time on the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. Thanks.